This is a review on a Chris Cutlery KC29 version 4 with Bohe. A quick disclosure before I get too far. First off, this blade is second hand. I purchased it with my own money and I know it has seen a lot of use before it came to me. So keep that in mind as you're seeing photos and videos of the sword as they may not accurately represent what you would get brand new from Chris Cutlery. Additionally, I'm not affiliated with Chris Cutlery in any way that I know of. This sword was purchased as I mentioned on my own dime, it's not a review sample and nobody from Chris Cutlery asked me or coaxed me into doing this review. Hopefully that gives you some perspective on what biases I might have. This is a review that I thought I'd put out mostly because my first experience with this sword was a custom iteration done by Cottontail Customs or Frank the Bunny and it goes in the short list of swords that I wish I had never sold. I regretted it almost instantly after selling the sword and it's one that I still think on as something that was magical and that was a, just a brilliant sword and I thought that getting this sword was a chance to reunite with that sword and rekindle some of the magic I had with it. That almost sounds oddly romantic and I don't mean it to but for everyone that's had a lot of swords there's a few swords that go on the list of them that you wish you hadn't sold and that one from Chris Cutlery that was done up by Cottontail Customs is definitely on my short list. A little bit of context about this sword. It's a sword made by Chris Cutlery as I've mentioned and I've had a variety of swords from Chris Cutlery and enjoyed most of the pieces that I've had. In the number of pieces that I've had from Chris Cutlery I don't really have much to complain about. All in all they're pretty consistent pieces and there's no wide sweeping systemic things that they always seem to get wrong. They're one of the few folks as well that style Filipino style blades and I really love the Compulon that I got from them. One day I'll probably do a review on that as well. For some reason, Chris Cutlery stopped making the Katana, the KC-29 version 1 through 5, whatever you want to see, but the KC-29 version XYZ disappeared from their website for a time, and now it's back up for sale, so review time for me, I guess. As I prefer to review swords that can actually be bought new, the, the point of these reviews is really to help prospective buyers make a decision about swords. It's tough to find swords, to see them, to feel them in your hand, to get any kind of tangible information about them so hopefully these things help people make decisions on what they want to spend their money on and that doesn't really have a whole lot of point if you can't actually go buy a sword that's real similar to the one I'm reviewing. I think this applies to really any KC29 or KC26 version 1 through 5. 5 being the one that's available now. There are some slight differences between the Fuji, Kashura, the Minuki, the Suba, some of that stuff changes, but really the blade, the shape of the blade, the geometry of the blade, the steel that the blade is made from, as well as most of the overall aesthetics of the blade stay relatively consistent between those versions. So hopefully, even though this particular version is not available for sale, it's still applicable to any buying decisions you might be making. Anyway, more about the sword itself. The sword is made out of 5160 steel, and it became an early favorite in the production katana market because of its pleasing shape and its pretty renowned durability. It has a pleasant koshisori style shape that you don't see in a lot of today's production katanas. The sword also has a utilitarian or minimalist style to it. There are a great many, myself included, who really dig the aesthetics pretty hard. The Ito on mine is a synthetic silk, but the materials differ from version to version. There's some kind of Samegawa substitute in place as well. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It appears to be some sort of snake skin, but I'm guessing it's a synthetic type. I'm not exactly sure though. The Numenuki on mine are some sort of dragon, but I can't tell because they're not particularly easy to see or very detailed. Again though, the Minuki change between version to version. The Fuchi, Kashura, Suba, Koiguchi and Koijiri are made of some sort of metallic material. That's right, I tested them with a magnet and it is actually magnetic. So they say they're iron and it's actually magnetic. So woo for magnets. The sword that I have is a polished metallic silver looking finish. Other iterations are known to have different finishes. Sometimes they're blued or blackened, but I personally dig this one quite a bit. Simple metallic silver looking fittings. The Suba has two holes drilled into it for decoration on the Mune side of the blade. Frankly, I think it dresses it up just a little bit and adds that touch of class that a plain blank Suba might be missing. The Sai is made of hard wood and has a buffalo horn kurigata. The Sai is thicker than any other production sword that I've held, with the exception of one from TFW, and I'll get to that later on in the review. Some of you know what I'm hinting at and some of you don't, but I'll get to it later. The hardwood saya looks cool to me. It doesn't show fingerprints easily and frankly it would serve as a weapon by itself. There are not many saya that function as a bat when necessary, but this one feels like it would. 
From a user standpoint, the Saya holds the blade very well, perhaps a little bit too well. My blade is secure in the Saya before the Habaki touches the Kwaiguchi area. That's not a great thing, as it can affect the performance in Kata and Aya, and basically it's interacting or inserting resistance where it really shouldn't be. That said, other blades from Chris Cutlery have not had this issue, so it might just be that this one wasn't carved out correctly or warped in some way during shipping or through time. The real downside is that this type of issue is not something that can be fixed by sanding near the Koiguchi a bit. It's always going to be there unless I start sanding out the Saya from the inside with a stick of some kind. I guess still I would rather have it too tight than too loose. The blade is made from 5160 steel and differentially heat treated, supposedly. I don't see the Hamon on mine, but there are examples online of people that have gotten the Hamon to pop out after etching the blade or polishing it or doing something to bring the Hamon out. By default it doesn't really show up and it's kind of hard to see if you really stare at it. The blade feels kind of tip heavy in the hand but still moves pretty quickly. It's not a light blade. The version with Bohi that I have weighs 2 pounds 7 ounces. It's not the heaviest blade out there but it's far from the lightest. This blade also has a point of balance that's 6 inches from the Suba. That's not terribly uncommon on a 29 inch blade, but it is a little bit on the higher side. It feels like it wants to jump out of your hands at times. Other iterations of the blade without a bohi may have a balance point that's a little bit closer to the Suba. There's also a noticeable distal taper to the blade. The sword has some nice finishing near the Nikago that you don't see in a lot of production swords other than say some pieces from Hanwei, but the flats of the blade have some unevenness that you can really notice when you hold it up to the light or when you're cleaning the blade after using it. In terms of use, it's a comfortable blade. I like that the metal Koiguchi makes me feel a little less like I'm going to rip the sword in half if I draw it really quickly and accidentally cut my fingers off. It's also relatively fun to cut with. I only cut water bottles in this review, but I would have no issue using the sword on tatami or rolled newspapers or any of the other hard targets that I customarily use in my reviews. Frankly, I just didn't this time because I didn't have any available. I think that it would do fine on harder targets. These blades really have a reputation for being pretty durable, and you can find that information online in more places than this review. I smacked the blade into the stand a few times, but I didn't experience any issues with edge rolling or bending. The blade is also secondhand, as I've mentioned, so I don't really want to hold the sharpness against it, but honestly it's actually still pretty sharp. At least I would call it adequately sharp. I don't know that it's paper cutting sharp, but the edge seems in good order, it doesn't have any rolling or any major issues, despite the fact that I know it's been used to cut some harder targets than I'm cutting now. It's time for me to really wrap this review up, and before I do I should try and answer the question of is the blade worth it or not? And I really hate answering this question because it's very subjective. To me, this time I think yes. $375 is what Chris Cutlery is currently asking, and I think that $375 is reasonable. The reason I say that is because I think the blade looks cool, it's sized in a way that's comfortable for me to personally use, it fits my big sausage hands well, and those things added together make a blade that I'm very comfortable with and I'm comfortable spending $375 on, or would be if I didn't already have one. Now, the other things that I'll say I should note about this sword and the things that I like are not things that are necessarily going to be liked by you. One, the grip for my big sausage hands is comfortable. It fits my, it's wider up at the top here and fits my big hand here and then it tapers off to a smaller size here. But if you have smaller hands, it's probably not going to be a very comfortable grip for you. The second thing is, just because it's thicker up here doesn't mean that the suka is any more durable. In fact, this suka core is cracked. So, just because it's thicker, I, it doesn't, doesn't necessarily make it more resilient to being shitty. Still, it's functional, but that's why it squeaks when I move it around thusly. The other thing that I'll note is that the Saya is thick. I don't necessarily mind the Saya being thick, even though this one doesn't fit perfectly. I still think it's cool. I like having a metal Koiguchi. The Koijiri, though, came off on this one. I glued it back on but it did come off. I do like that it's thick and it feels durable. It feels like it could be dropped and banged into stuff without cracking and falling apart as easily as some of the others out there. Uh, it feels like I might be able to use it as a bat in a pinch, but at the same time, it's gonna be something that bothers a few people out there when they're used to a smaller or more refined, uh, refined feeling Saya. The other thing that should be noted about this sword is that at $375, there's a lot of other products out there. You can get products from Dynasty Forge in their Musha series. You can get stuff from Hanway in their Practical, Practical Plus, Practical Pro, Pro, Practical, Practically Practical line. There's a lot of things available there. There's a Ronin Dojo Pro series. There's a lot of options from Minatoshi. 
Now, I feel like this blade kind of balances 60% cutting style and 40% comfortable for Aya. If I had to put those two things in buckets and weigh them, that'd be about where I'd put the blade. The simple fact that it can comfortably operate in either one of those spaces, for me, is something that I think makes the blade worth a little bit more. It's not going to be the best cutting blade if you're specifically cutting tatami. It doesn't have the profile to necessarily excel at that the same way some of the, the Practical Plus XL geometry stuff does. And it's also not as light as some of the other blades out there, like an Iaito made out of aluminum. If that's all you're doing is Aya, this blade is going to be a little bit heavier. But the fact that I think it comfortably works with either of them is something that I find as an additional bonus to the blade. The last way that I can maybe coax you to consider value on this sword is if you compare it to a very similar product. The traditional Filipino weapons katana, for example, well, not really for example, just that one. The traditional Filipino weapons katana and the Chris Cutlery KC-29 blades look and feel the same to me. Now, that is, is kind of a, uh, and sounds very accusatory in my mind, and I don't mean it to be, but when I, as an owner of multiple of the Chris Cutlery swords and multiples of the TFW katanas, I can say that there are some very striking similarities between them that lead me to say that they are pretty much the same product. Uh, one, the Saya is pretty much the thick, chunky, can be used as a bat Saya. They appear to be made in a very similar vein, though one is painted and one is usually showing the natural wood color. Both, however, are adorned with the same sort of Koijiri, Kurigata, and Koiguchi uh, in terms of fittings, though they, they differ slightly in terms of aesthetics. They're usually just different colored metal. The katana itself is, uh, well, pretty much the same. Both seem to have Koshi Sori, both seem to have the same geometry. The difference is that TFW advertises the blade as 5160 and D2. I don't know if that is true or not, and I'm not trying to say that it isn't or make, again, an accusation. I'm only saying that uh, Chris advertises it as 5160, TFW advertises it as, as 5160 and D2. I don't know if they use different steels in the construction. Uh, the Chris Cutler is also supposed to be differentially hardened, and I don't know if the TFW blade is uh, differentially hardened or through hardened. But in any case, there may be some metallurgical differences between the swords. I can't really say that. I don't see it with my naked eye. But I can say that they feel very, very similar in the hand. They feel the same. The Nakagos look like they're dressed the same. The Sori looks like it's in the same spot. The Hibaki looks like it's the same. Most of the time, the fittings are very, very similar and made out of the same type of thing. The Ito is uh, obviously a change from series to series, but the Samegawa snakeskin looking replacement looks the same. Uh, they both have very similar feeling sukas. Uh, so they, to me, they feel like the same product. And to you, it makes a difference because the traditional Filipino weapons blade is $425 and the Chris Cutlery is $375. Now, I personally like the traditional Filipino weapons Manuki a little bit better, but other than that, uh, it's some aesthetic differences, at least from, from what I'm able to tell and how they feel and how they look. And maybe that can be a savings for you and is another way to compare it to another product that's on the market and, uh, and why this one may be a little bit better value for you. That is all I have for you, though. Hopefully this provided some insight onto swords that were available and, and gave you some information to make an informed buying decision. If you like it, uh, throw a thumbs up or throw some comments if you have questions. Thanks for watching and cheers.